Coming up, like I said, we got some coverage on bluemoonrising.org, an eco-tourism resort with tiny houses in Maryland. Special thanks, too, to TennesseeTinyHomes.com, Joe Everson and crew. This is the site where we're having our upcoming hands-on tiny house building workshop. Here's the information right here. Three days with camping, and we're building three structures. It's going to be rather insane. Hey, I'm Derek Diedrichson from RelaxShacks.com, author of Humble Home, Simple Shacks. Today we're hanging at the Yestermorrow Design School up here in Warren, Vermont, and we'll be talking to many bloggers, authors, and designers, builders too, about their space efficiency design tips. So come with. By the way, keeping in the theme of tiny, today's interview studio gonna be a micro cabin shelter and or camper I designed and built called The Cub. Couple unique approaches, design tips, utilizing the space in your basement rafters or your basement floor joists or your rafters. Build a box that swings into that negative void that clips in place afterwards. You could store books in there, clothes, who knows what. It swings up, locks in place, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, another tip, floorage. Build a mini floating deck system in one room or half room of your house that has a plywood top. It opens up, much like framing a deck with joists and all, and you can store things in that. You don't have to see the stuff, just make sure it's somewhere that's fairly accessible so when opening and closing it, you don't have to remove all your furniture. Uh, your oven. Your oven's a great place. It's space that's usually not used until Thanksgiving when you're cooking a giant old turkey. Um, when we grew up, we stored cereal boxes, loaves of bread, because we have very, had a very small kitchen within that oven. Just remember, though, before you preheat your oven, take that stuff out of there, or the results could be rather unpleasant. A lot of times with buildings, we get stuck in the mindset of using 2x4s and dimensional lumber for all of the structure. But with a tiny house, it's really important to consider other materials and to squeeze a little bit more space uh, while still maintain maintaining that structure. So with the mushroom tiny house, we used one inch steel tubing welded for the loft platform. And that added about three inches of head space inside of the structure, which, which actually feels like a lot. We also used that loft, this grid of steel, uh, as a mounting place for our mushroom insulation ceiling tiles. With a tiny house and a lot of hard materials, uh, a lot of times the acoustics of these structures are pretty terrible, really echoey. Uh, and so this, this allowed us to create a space that was a lot more comfortable, a lot more livable. Use multi-functioning furniture, or the term as coined by Lester Walker is called turniture, uh, a perfect example, in my tiny house, I have a kitchen counter that doubles up as a keyboard stand so my wife can play keyboard in the kitchen because there's no other space for a keyboard. So we want to talk about the three function rule. In the Comic Camper, we tried to establish three functions for every space or every piece of furniture. So in the back of the camper, there's a rear couch that folds down into the full-size bed is the second function. And then the third function is it's also um, a workspace and office area. When it's in couch position, there's a fold-down desk, so it's an office. And fourth function, if you guys are feeling really crazy, do the fourth function challenge. And uh, then there's water tank and battery bank underneath, so storage. And the front is kind of the mirror of that where we have a, a dinette and then that folds down into a bed. And then underneath that, there's also uh, space for composting and um, storage. Hey, this is Dan from Tiny Home Builders, and one of the things that we do to save space is we install cabinetry and shelving, which is pretty obvious. But when you install the shelving, you want to install it someplace that you know you're going to make sure you're not going to bump your head into it. And so, a place that we found that's that's really great is right above the toilet. You've got two walls on either side of the toilet, and it just makes a really great place for for the shelving. And we've even installed a cabinet that the the top of it kind of slides down and, and creates a little bit of a shelf. And we always install a outlet inside of our inside of our toilet area where the shower and the toilet are at. And so when that slides down, it creates a little table. My mom, this is in my mom's house, 
She can have a little bit of makeup there. She's got a hair dryer, everything she needs to, uh, to do her makeup and get ready in the morning. Another place that we install storage is over the tongue of the trailer. You're starting to see this a lot more. It's a great place because the tongue, you don't want to extend too far out beyond the tongue because you need that room so that when you're, when you're turning your car, you, you want to make sure your, your house doesn't hit your car. But uh, as far as the actual tongue area, it's a great place to, uh, great place to store stuff. And uh, put, we put our water heaters, our electrical hookup, and we still have a little bit of room for some other stuff. One of my favorite ways to save space in a tiny house is in the kitchen, using magnetic strips where you can hang knives or any other sort of metal implement. And then also in interior walls, you can knock out the paneling on one side and in between the, uh, the framing, you can put shelves and on those shelves, you can put spices or, or any other sort of small item. And uh, it's a really kind of clever way to, to build in storage into your house. So my favorite space saving tip for tiny houses isn't really, it's more about creating an illusion of more space um, visually. And what I like to do with all the furniture, for instance, if it's a couch or a chair, is to have as much negative space and uh, in the design as possible. So for instance, with the couch in my house, I lifted it off the floor about four inches um, from on the bottom, even though there are drawers, so that it f gives you that little uh, reveal um, and it seems like it's floating above the floor. And that, I think, little things like that can make, um, can make more space, actual space, but also makes it feel like it's, um, things aren't sort of sitting uh, with so much bulk on the ground. Um, and then I also use hooks. I love hooks. I, love, I just hang most of my shirts or pants, I hang them because um, it's just so easy. Okay, storage tip number one. I have a lot of shoes, so I am building some shoe storage into my ceiling. I'm taking inspiration from the IKEA shoe boxes, but making them out of a nice wood and one or two on each side of the of the ceiling. And then storage tip number two, I can't have a wet bath like I want because I have an incinerating electrical toilet. So my shower's on one end, the toilet's on the other. There's a lot of unused space in that shower when I'm not using it as a shower. So I'm building like a storage box that will slide on rails over above the toilet when I want to shower. And then it can actually be used as storage in the shower when I'm not using the shower. You know, I talked about making smaller spaces feel bigger for a while, and then I realized after a while that that was not the way to go. Sometimes a small space is what you're shooting for. So as long as it feels spacious and not big, as long as it doesn't feel cramped, there's no reason to make it feel big. And that has to do with a lot of um, physical things and just psychological tricks. Tricks of the trade to make people think they're in spacious spaces. Basis. One of which is, by the way, to um, remember the Japanese idea of the uh, tansu, oh, t -t -t the tatami mat. Uh, the tatami mat, they say, one mat to lie down, one half mat to stand up, whether you're a ruler or a peasant. If you can always just think of it that way in designing space, that you can, a person can only take up so much space at one time, as long as you make those areas where people are going to hang out feel spacious, you're set to go. Okay, so we have a lot of fun space-saving things in our tiny house, but my favorite one is the pull-out drawers under our kitchen cabinetry. It's awesome because we can put all of our power cords in this space and um, they're not all over the counter. My number one feature of space-saving is just getting rid of stuff. I mean, too much of us, too many of us have List multiple tools for the same task. So just pick one favorite thing and go for it. My second favorite is just uh, flip up tables. Uh, modular furniture, you need to pull it out, assemble it, all that stuff. But uh, just the flip up stuff where it folds down out of the way and you can just, you know, bring it up. Uh, the IKEA Norbo table is a great example. We just pull it, flip it up, flip it. Even with a cup of coffee in your hand, you can do it one handed. <laughs> As far as kind of trying to maximize the space inside your little house, some of the things that have helped me the most is I've got uh, a set of shelves that are uh, between the rafters, the loft rafters. 
um, or loft joists rather. And um, I also try to overlap functionality. So uh, as odd as it sounds, my bathroom is right across from the kitchen. So the kitchen sink is also the bathroom sink. So, you know, this overlap of space, I think becomes really important. That's all. I can't think of anything else. I'm not good at this. I'm not like them. I'm just a person.